guys after playing my barbarian for over 100 hours i decided to try a druid build and let me tell you it is so fun to play i started making this druid build and leveled him 1 through 50 pretty easily and not only that but this is super fun even compared to my barbarian this druid at level 50 in comparison is so much more powerful i feel like around level 50 and leveling 1 through 50 is actually pretty easy and a ton of fun. Now this druid build specifically revolves around using tornado and hurricane as well as some other skills. So what I'm going to do is go through the abilities really quick and I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this build to level 1 through 50. Now the first thing we'll do is go off and start talking about the actual stats and the skill tree. So again as I mentioned there are some defensive abilities on this build but primarily we're going to build our build around tornado and storm strike. This is because storm strike gives us the ability to replenish our spirit very very quickly and then basically spam tornado and do a ton of damage to every enemy around us. And now we're going to start with one out of five in storm strike and then go into enhance storm strike and fear storm strike. Now storm strike itself does damage to enemies and it chains up to three surrounding enemies at a time. You also get 25% damage reduction for three seconds after dealing damage with the skill giving us a ton of extra defensive ability. And then with the modifier storm strike has a 15% chance to immobilize all enemies for 2.7 seconds making enemies not be able to do anything and storm strike also has a 50 percent chance to make enemies vulnerable for three seconds and this is key because vulnerable damage is our big damage on a lot of classes so this is going to make enemies vulnerable 50 percent of the time you hit them with this which is which is really big so then we're going to jump down here to our core skills we're going to want to grab a couple things you keep in mind towards the end of this section i'm going to throw up all the actual levels and which levels you should take each skill at so the first thing we're going to want to do is grab points and tornado. Eventually you're going to want to max this out because this is going to be our primary ability. This is going to conjure a swirling tornado and deal a bunch of damage uh, to enemies that we fight. And the modifiers here, you're going to want to get enhanced tornado and primal tornado. And that's going to make it so each time you cast a tornado, you get a 20% chance that an extra one will spawn. And then enemies damaged by that tornado are slowed and it stacks up to 40%. So you get the slow damage on enemies as a bonus. And again, the actual chance of spawning an extra tornado, which is just extra damage and free damage at that point. So it's very, very good. The other thing you're going to want to grab here at core skills is passive. So we're going to want to get predatory instinct or critical strike chance against close enemies. Heart of the Wild, one out of three, so that way we can channel over to Wild Impulses, which means your core skills cost 9% more spirit, but they do increase damage, which is fine because our spirit regen should be pretty easy with this build. It's nothing like the Barbarian. And then Abundance, this passive is going to make sure that basic skills generate 18% more spirit. You're going to want to max that out three out of three for our spirit regen. Now, once you jump down here to Defensive Skills, we're going to want to get one point out of five in Earth and Bulwark because this is gonna be kind of our defensive ability that gives us some barrier. So what this means is when you cast this, first you wanna go into Enhanced Earthen Bulwark and Preserving Earthen Bulwark. The way this works is when you cast this skill, you're gonna get rocks that surround you for nine seconds and it's gonna give you a barrier of 45% of your base life. Meaning every time you cast this, you're gonna get a huge barrier to your overall defense. And this is gonna last again for nine seconds. The cooldown on this is 14.87 seconds with my current reductions meaning there's only going to be five seconds where we're really at all without barrier. So you want this for defense and the modifiers are going to make you unstoppable, meaning it removes control impairing effects on you. And when you cast this, you also get 18% base life as fortify. So we're going to get barrier with this skill and fortify, giving us a bunch of extra defense. Next, we're going to jump down here to companion skills. The first thing we're going to want to do is go one out of five point in wolves. This is going to be our primary companion and then go to enhance wolf pack and ferocious wolf pack. Now this makes it so you get two companion wolves and they jump on enemies to bite them for a large chunk of damage. And then the modifiers means that the wolves actually deal 20% increased damage to enemies that are proc with immobilized stun slowed or poison, which they will be most of the time with the rest of the stuff in this build. And then lucky hit where your wolves attack have a 10% chance to fortify you for 5% of your life. And over time with both wolves attacking, you'll be able to get fortify very, very often with this actual ability. Next, we're gonna want three out of three in nature's reach. And this is gonna deal 9% increased damage to distant enemies. And you'll double this bonus in terms of damage if they are slowed, stunned, immobilized, or knocked back, uh, which most of the time they'll always be slowed because of our ability up here of Primal Tornado, because that's going to slow enemies by 8% for 3.2 seconds when hit with a tornado. Next, we're going to jump down to Wrath Skills. So here we're going to want to take a couple things. Here we're going to want to take initially for levels 1 through 50, Hurricane. Hurricane is a great skill here, and it's going to form a hurricane around you that deals a decent chunk of damage to surrounding enemies over 9 seconds. Then we're going to go into Enhanced Hurricane, 
and natural hurricane now both of those modifiers are going to make this skill so that enemies that are damaged by hurricane are slowed by 25 percent again adding slow to all of the enemies around us in the immediate vicinity so we get all those damages on slow enemies and then hurricane has a 15 percent chance to make enemies vulnerable so we're stacking enough vulnerable chance that we're almost guaranteed at any given point to make an enemy vulnerable when we hit them then we're going to grab the passage elemental exposure this is going to make it so that your storm skills have up to a 10 percent chance to make enemies vulnerable for three seconds and then three out of three on endless tempest so that way we increase the duration of hurricane and cataclysm by 15 percent then we're going to want to grab trample and this is kind of going to be our movement ability and, and get out of dodge quick ability for levels 1 through 50. It's going to make it so you shape shift into a werebear and you become unstoppable. So you get rid of a lot of these actual effects that you have on you if you have them. And then it's going to knock back enemies and give you kind of an opening and a quick burst ability to get out of traffic um, when you start getting surrounded or if you have trouble early or mid game. Then once we go into ultimate skills, we want primarily passives here. And we're gonna want a lot of these passives because they complement the build very well. We're gonna want defensive posture, it increases the amount of fortify you gain from all sources by 15%, giving us extra fortify for damage reduction. A 15% chance when struck to fortify you again, giving us even more fortify and then reduce the duration of control impairing effects and you actually triple this effect while you have fortify for over 50 percent of your maximum life so this is like fortify heaven right here and then we're going to want to go into defiance where our nature magic skills deal 12 percent increased damage to enemies and if you can see our skills our tornado skill is nature magic as well as earthen bulwark and hurricane so this is going to be a huge damage boost to all those primary skills we're going to want circle of life nature magic skills that consume spirit heal you for three percent of your maximum life again giving you extra damage reduction healing uh, and survivability to stay alive and then three out of three in resonance where nature magic skills deal 10 percent increased damage and then the last go as a key passive you're going to want perfect storm and this makes that storm skills that you cast grant one spirit and deal 15 percent increased damage when damaging a vulnerable or mobilized or slowed enemy and all of our enemies that we fight with these skill lineups that we have they're going to be almost always vulnerable or always slowed definitely almost every single enemy so we're going to almost always get this bonus and those are essentially the main skills you want and like i said this is the build for level 1 through 50. i'm going to go into the rest of the build here in just a second but i'll go over the skill tree just one time so you can see it and then i'll also throw up the levels here so you can see kind of what levels you should be putting stuff in right now and that way you can go about how to plan your build from levels 1 through 50 and what the best way to put and allocate points are to the skill tree additionally in the comments i'll post a written guide for reference now the next thing we're concerned with is spirit boon so spirit boons are essentially the ability that druids specifically have and what this is going to do is once unlocked it's going to give you actual special attribute boosts for your character and it's going to make it so that your character overall is a lot more powerful with certain boons activated once you start leveling up your druid you're gonna have to get spirit offerings to unlock a lot of these on each individual category and as you can see there's four different spirit boon types and you can unlock all four of these for each one you just have to get enough spirit offerings to do so the first one for the deer spirit you want to unlock is wariness so you're going to spend up until you get that skill it's going to give us 10 percent reduced damage from elites which is a big damage reduction ability next for the eagle spirit you're going to want to unlock up to swooping attacks and avian wrath First, we're going to take swooping attacks because that's going to give us 10% attack speed. Next, for the wolf spirit, you're going to want to unlock until you get energized. And on lucky hit, this is going to deal damage that has up to a 15% chance to restore 10 spirit, giving us 10 additional spirit and spirit regen overall, allowing us to generate a lot more and try our best to never run out. And then finally, for the snake spirit, you're going to want to unlock the final one here. It's going to cost you 100 spirit offerings. It's going to be calm before the storm. It makes it so that nature magic, which is our primary ability for magic for tornadoes, skills have up to a 10% chance to reduce the cooldowns of your ultimate skill by two seconds. And this is going to be the best one to use for the snake spirit. Now the fifth overall spirit boon that we're going to use, and you can see at the bottom here, spirit bonding, it's currently locked, but once you unlock every boon from every spirit, you get access to spirit bonding and it'll let you activate an additional boon uh, here as a choice and the last one we're going to do here is take the eagle spirit as our fifth boon once you've unlocked all of these and we're going to take avian wrath that's going to gain us 30 percent critical strike damage which is the biggest benefit of all these so far so make sure once you get there and unlock all these you take this as your fifth boon because it's going to give you a lot more damage overall next levels one through 50 you do still want to put aspects on your gear and we're going to go over the aspects you definitely want that way you're going to be a lot more powerful early on and in the middle of the game 
Now, this is one I currently don't have, but if you find it, pay attention because you want to acquire Storm Chaser's Aspect. And what this does is it makes it so that tornadoes will seek up to one to three targets. And it overall makes your tornado ability that we're going to be using quite a lot, a lot more effective because it actively seeks targets instead of just running randomly as a tornado. And it gives you guaranteed damage across your tornadoes this way. Another one you want on a ring is the resource aspect of the umbral and this aspect is only able to be put or found on a ring so if you find one this is very important because it restores one to four of your primary resource when you crowd control an enemy which we crowd control an enemy instantaneously basically when we fight and this is going to give us a lot more spirit generation and fights so this is the second most important if not the most important aspect for this build because it gives us a lot more spirit to work with. The next aspect we want is Shepard's Offensive Aspect, and you can get this very easily with the Codex of Power, and I'll include all the locations for these in the written guide in the comments below, but this is going to give us core skills that do an additional 6-8% damage for each active companion, and we always have two active companions for our wolves. This is going to give us anywhere from 12-16% to 16 additional damage at all times, so this is a huge damage aspect that you 100% want on some part of your gear then for our pants we want the defensive aspect of mending stone and you can see my skill here is a little bit lower level just due to the way i put this on this gear but you want a higher level piece for this aspect because it's going to make the duration of earthen bulwark increase by six seconds and as you can see rocks already surround you for nine seconds so if we increase that by six seconds that's going to give us 15 seconds of this ability giving us almost constant uptime basically on this ability since our cooldown is only 15 seconds this lasts for 15 seconds by the time it cools down we get to cast it again this is why it's very very important to have and it gives us that extra defensive ability almost indefinitely in addition when you kill an enemy your earth skills replenish a certain amount of your barrier so again we're getting barrier with that aspect and we're getting fortify and barrier with this aspect already giving us a ton of barrier a ton of fortify and you're going to find that it's going to make you survive almost every single fight that you go into especially early and mid game now one aspect you should 100% have on this build just for speed and spirit regen is the rapid offensive aspect. You can see I have it on my ring and it's going to make it so that basic skills gain 15 to 30% attack speed, meaning our basic skill is our primary spirit generation skill, Storm Strike. We already generate a lot of spirit in general by just using this skill, but with increased attack speed, we gain a ton more spirit a lot quicker and allows us to have almost infinite uptime in a lot of cases to just spam and cast Tornado consistently over and over and over again now i have aspect of the expectant on my two-handed weapon and this is, gives us a big damage boost because attacking enemies with a basic skill increases the damage of your next core skill cast and basically the build works so that way we hit people with our basic attack regenerate our spirit very quickly and then spam tornado and so when we hit people with our ability we're automatically charging up damage for our tornado skill that we're next going to follow up with over and over and over again so this is great to have on your two-handed weapon so you get a hundred percent extra bonus and then this aspect i have on my amulet which makes your core skills deal up to 30 to 60 percent increased damage based on the amount of fortify that you have is great because we're going to be stacking a lot of fortify with this build so this can give you extra damage as well but primarily the first four or five aspects mentioned are the primary ones that you definitely want to run and i'll throw that list up here really quick again just so you can reference that easy and as long as you have some of the main ones there you should be perfectly fine leveling your druid from levels 1 to 50. Now I'll throw up some of the information here for your gear, for the best stats to look out for for your druid, as well as some of the jewelry pieces and gems for the actual slots. So you're going to want rubies in this kind of gear right here. All your armor, you're going to want rubies in. You're going to want sapphires in your actual weapons. So that way you get critical strike damage to crowd controlled enemies. And you're going to want the highest skull possible in your jewelry slots so that way you get advantage of the extra armor that those offer for your character now because we make enemies vulnerable very easily we're going to want a lot of vulnerable damage when possible to this build you can see this is a very good role that i have on this weapon as an example i got 32 percent damage to crowd control enemies and then overall i got 28 percent core skill damage which goes along with our primary skill that gives a ton of extra damage there 40 percent vulnerable damage which is another big stat we want because we're going to be making enemies vulnerable all the time 32 percent critical strike damage which gives us critical strike damage which is very important obviously to doing big critical hits additionally we want anything that gives us a certain amount of reductions or critical strike chance and overall cooldown reduction because cooldown reduction is going to let us use our abilities much quicker in a lot of cases and give us very quick uptime for our abilities to do even more damage. I would recommend early on you run a two-handed staff because it gives you that damage to crowd controlled enemies as an affix that is set onto the weapon and then generally gives you a lot of core skill vulnerable or critical strike damage 
as additional affixes. And since this is only a level 50 build so far, we're not gonna get into the Paragon board just yet. Now I do just wanna quickly go over the rotation for the abilities. So essentially the Tornado ability is gonna be our primary ability that we're gonna spam and do the most damage enemies with. So what we're gonna wanna do is use our main basic skill, Storm Strike, to hit enemies with our left click or regular attack button and gain as much spirit as we possibly can. As we gain our spirit, then we're then going to cast Tornado around a group of enemies and it's going to be able to damage a large majority of them. We should be able to cast this a couple times. We then have our Wolves ability that we can cast and cast on enemies. And you can cast this when you're currently working on building up spirit for Tornado. This is going to give us the Fortify from the actual Wolf hits as well as the damage itself. And then before you go into a fight, ideally you want to go ahead and cast Hurricane as your first ability before you even worry about Storm Striking anyone because it gives us a chance to make enemies vulnerable right off the bat and it gives us consistent damage on enemies while we're casting all of our other skills so run into battle cast hurricane then you storm strike to fill up your spirit meter a little bit cast bulwark for the defense barrier and fortify that you get cast tornado as many times as you can and then cast wolves so that way they can jump on enemies while you're regening your spirit and which gives you additional fortify that will work alongside earthen bulwark then we can use our trample ability if we get stuck in a fight or a tight situation to knock enemies out of the way and kind of get back to safety now the big thing here is you can basically hold down your basic skill attack button which would be storm strike and spam tornadoes at the same time and while you're not able to cast a tornado that way you'll automatically be using your basic skill to attack enemies and regen your spirit so that way you can just basically spam both and constantly be filling up your spirit meter so again i'll cast hurricane i'll cast our defensive ability and then we'll start spamming tornado here while we're regenerating our actual spirit and you can see leaving at level 50 doing regular nightmare dungeons or dungeons in general i'm able to run through a bunch of these enemies very very quickly and do a lot of damage this way that being said that is this level 1 through 50 druid build and as i level this up i'll come up with an end game build that way you guys can see the paragon board and everything i set up for that but this build is super fun to play so make sure you guys go try it out if you have a druid or you don't already have a druid definitely make one because it's very fun to play that being said make sure you like the video down below let me know your thoughts in the comments and check out this diablo 4 video on the left or the right for more awesome diablo 4 content Thanks.